My name is Henry Johnson. And some of you may recognize me from a video I did a few years ago called Surviving the Big One. And where I'm standing right now is on the western end of the San Bernardino segment of the San Andreas. You can see right down the valley, that is the San Andreas Fault. This is one of the segments scientists feel has the highest probability of producing the big one. But we're going to be learning some things about the big one and other earthquake faults that I think you're going to find very surprising, in many ways very comforting, but nevertheless, they're all true. As I mentioned, I'm standing here on the San Andreas, and this section is very interesting because this is where the San Bernardino segment and the Mojave segment meet. Well, the San Andreas is not the only earthquake fault that produces major earthquakes. And to really get an understanding of what kind of risks we're facing, I think we need to look at some historical earthquakes that have happened in the past. To most of us, earthquakes are especially frightening in the way they occur without warning leaving behind vivid memories of their incredible power. The largest earthquakes ever recorded in the continental United States occurred on the New Madrid Fault, located in the Midwest between December 1811 and February 1812. There were three main earthquakes estimated to be Richter magnitude 8.4 to 8.7. These earthquakes were so powerful they changed the course of the Mississippi River, flooding the town of New Madrid. This would just be the beginning of 2,000 aftershocks that would occur over the next 10 years. Five of these earthquakes would be between magnitude 7 and magnitude 8. In 1857, the Fort Tejon quake, magnitude 7.9, occurred on the San Andreas Fault. Surprisingly, the adobe structures in Los Angeles withstood the shaking with very little damage. This earthquake caused only one fatality due to a collapsing wall at Fort Tejon. From such historic events, we have only verbal accounts. Today, the effects of major earthquakes are witnessed throughout the world, as in the recent Kobe, Japan quake. In California, people watch with fearful fascination, asking, will our next major earthquake be like Kobe? San Francisco in 1906 was much like Kobe. Land was at such a premium that houses and apartments were built up against one another. Swamp areas were filled in with sand and soil then build on as if they were solid ground. Remarkably, after the estimated magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake, most of the city was still left standing. The earthquake damage was modest compared to the fires which over the next few days burned most of San Francisco to the ground. Newspaper accounts recorded 700 fatalities, a number greatly underreported for fear of slowing the flow of immigrants. More accurate estimates identify 5,000 fatalities most of which were due to the fire. The largest earthquake recorded in North America was the Great Alaska Quake in 1964. This earthquake measured a magnitude of 9.2. Reliable eyewitnesses recorded the ground shaking in Alaska to last anywhere from 4 minutes and 25 seconds to 7 full minutes. One area reported a full 10 minutes of shaking. The epicenter of the Alaska earthquake was near Prince William Sound about 80 miles southeast of Anchorage. The total energy released was the equivalent of 900 magnitude 7.2 earthquakes. Shock waves were felt as far as 800 miles away from the epicenter. Despite the massive power of this earthquake, the majority of buildings in Alaska only suffered moderate damage. In fact, none of the occupied high-rises in Anchorage suffered collapse. These were buildings that measured between five to 17 stories in height. The total loss of life as a result of the Alaska earthquake numbered about 136. Most of these people died as a result of the tsunamis or tidal waves. 
Miraculously, in Anchorage, there were only nine fatalities out of a population of approximately 50,000. The 1971 Silmar earthquake, magnitude 6.7, shook the San Fernando Valley and parts of Los Angeles. This earthquake resulted in 64 deaths, most of whom died in the collapse of the Veterans Hospital in Silmar. The entire country watched as a major earthquake took place on national television for the first time during Game 3 of the 1989 World Series. Flash forward to the bottom of the fourth inning. Dave Parker barely, by inches, just misses a home run. Candy Maldonado with the hesitation, allowing Jose Canseco to score, and he fails. The camera soon switched from Candlestick Park to a single fire that was burning in the Marina District as a result of the magnitude 7.1 Loma Prieta earthquake. The collapse of a section of the Oakland Bay Bridge and the double-decker 880 freeway were among the most haunting images broadcast around the world. 64 people lost their lives in this earthquake, which broke a 30-mile segment of the San Andreas Fault. The greatest amount of building damage occurred in the communities around Santa Cruz, Watsonville, and Los Gatos, which were the closest to the epicenter. Ironically, the greatest loss of life occurred over 50 miles away in San Francisco. On June 28, 1992, a 7.4 magnitude earthquake struck the Mojave Desert hamlet of Landers, California. Seismologists were stunned when several hours later, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake shook the San Bernardino Mountain community of Big Bear. Despite the strong ground shaking from these consecutive earthquakes, there was only one fatality and no serious structural damage in the Los Angeles metropolitan area. The second most expensive natural disaster in U.S. history occurred on January 17, 1994, when the magnitude 6.7 Northridge earthquake hit at 4.31 in the morning. It happened 11 miles under one of the most populous areas of the state, a suburb of Los Angeles. 57 people died. 9,158 were seriously injured. 32,500 apartment and condominium units and 2,000 single-family homes were damaged or left uninhabitable. Ten highway bridges collapsed, closing three major freeways. Parts of a huge shopping mall in Northridge were destroyed, along with the collapse of seven concrete parking structures. Total damage estimates exceeded $20 billion. And as Californians recover once again, we must realize that earthquakes here are a way of life. <laughs>